Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Um, here I'm gonna play a game of TI4 on Tabletop Simulator. There's an excellent community for this out there. I basically did three complete days of editing over the turkey week because I got two subscribers and I'm entirely stoked about that. Oh wow, actually really good starting planets here. Um, grab. This, switch to here, what do we got? Um, I do like me a green tech skip, but that is definitely not a great planet. Um, we do Mintak, I'm not a fan of. Having an asteroid field might be good. Yeah, none of these planets are particularly great. <laughs> Let me grab Asteroid field and uh, see how it goes. Ugh, what is this mess? What is this mess? Is there even a good faction to pick from here? Um, uh, okay. All of these plants are junk. In fact, most of this is junk. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick up the Yasaro tribes. Uh, another junk planet. We do have an asteroid field. Um, so I'm going to pick up Clan of Sar. At least then I can compensate for the fact that I have junk planets by just leaving them. <laughs> oh, Supernova. All right, we'll pick up that. So that gives me the two red. That leaves a lot of planets out. Okay, so somehow this came back to me, which isn't a horrible one. Eh. Uh, so that means the green tech skip's probably not gonna get back to me because I think that was part of my original bag. Ah. Yellow tech skip, probably the worst one. All right, well, let's draw what we got. Go from there. Get rid of this. So let's see what we ended up with. Uh, we do have two interesting dynamics. We do have the two hazardous planets and the two cultural planets, which might work out well. Yellow tech skip, I think, is probably the worst tech skip you can end up with. Um, that's some nice resource production. And at the very least, this gets you a three influence each round, so you can pick up an extra token as a secondary to leadership. So it's about to come up to me and I think I'm gonna end up going Yasarl, but I'm still a little mixed. Um, having an asteroid field next to Megatol Rex as Saul might be pretty interesting. But I'd also like to place them in these two sections here, just to block reds from being thrown against me. Um, so I think I'll just add this little weak planet there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the off chance that I'm not able to place these planets too close. I think I'll be fine. I think the neighbor to my left is gonna be playing Mintak. Uh, he briefly mentioned it, so I kinda of don't wanna be next to him anyhow. And this strategy may <laughs> really backfire on me. Because I may end up losing a spot to place these really juicy planets next to me. 
<laughs> I think this is funny. I think Red was trying to put the towel there, and he was having trouble making it fit, so he's like, forget it. The towel just doesn't belong there. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I, I mean, I wanted a red there anyhow, so that works. Um, let me place this juicy, juicy planet right here. That really leaves me at a loss at what to do with this asteroid field. <laughs> well, at the very least, having all the reds out where they are, I probably won't have much of a choice as to where to put that asteroid field. So we do dogpile a little bit on red here because we uh, he mistakenly revealed that he had another best planet. So we wanted to force him to give that to green, who was looking a little lack. So I actually end up with a fantastic start here. I have a green tech skip close by. I've got tons of planets. Uh, it looks like purple and yellow are looking pretty nice too, but I think this is a really strong start. Uh, so I don't really have a strong preference towards one of these or the other. I don't really have an asteroid belt near me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do Clan of Sar, just cause I've played, um, you saw all tribes more recently. All right, so just some head thoughts about Klanisar. I always really like to go green. I don't really know if that actually works. Well, with Sar, actually getting Sarween tools is pretty good for them uh, because they end up producing so much as they move with their floating docks. All right, so I look out and end up getting um, Speaker, which is pretty nice. And for Clan of Sar, it's actually pretty nice if you get out an extra PDS or Space Dock. Um, I think Warfare would be really great to move. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up picking Warfare. Um, that way I can just pick up a couple early planets round one. Yikes, I don't like these secret objectives. As the clan of Sar, I'm not inclined to build a ton of PDS units. All right, so control six planets in Dawn home systems. Spin five trade goods. So with warfare, I should be able to take these planets here in round one very easily and score that public objective round one. So looking at some strat card picks, we got Necro with trade. Then we have Arbrick who picked up technology. Then we're going to Hakan who has leadership. L1Z1 picks up diplomacy, which is an interesting first round pick. It doesn't get picked very often. Um, and then politics is the classic, I mean, last uh, for pick move uh, with ghost. Something I'm noticing is that with Warfare, I could actually get very close to Megatol this turn. Moving a majority of my fleet into this region, and then moving again here. Could let me get an early Megatol.
All right, so I'm gonna just move a carrier over here, pick out these planets, and move to over here. I don't think I'm particularly threatened by ghosts, but let me go ahead and bring this little cruiser with me, just in case. Eh. No, we'll stay with this. Um, and then I pick up two trade goods for those two planets. So obviously passing here. So I'm going to go ahead and play the secondary this. This is probably the worst secondary that I like playing because it's completely random as to whether or not you get something worth it or not. Yep, and I get early game junk. So White is playing Uprising to kind of follow off of Diplomacy. Um, and they actually got some pretty good untaps there. Um, so I'm going to move a ton of stuff into the system here. Um, Moving my little floaties. Uh, I'm going to get two of these for taking the planet. And then I'm going to end up spending some money in order to produce. Um, So research got played, so I'm going to pay enough for a um, chart wing tools. I almost think that's mandatory with SAR. So trade ends up getting used here. And for anyone who doesn't play TI4 on Tabletop Simulator, it's a normal convention that you can get your trade goods for free if you just promise to pay the person who popped trade, uh, trade good in the future. And that's what I do here. So I'm um, doing the cruise if wormhole on this planet for Ghost in exchange for a future use of his promissory note. Uh, his promise you know, it's actually really good. And we're also washing trade goods. So use Warfare here to remove the command counter here. So something that does concern me is how much plastic is on the board with Necro.
So I kind of proxy trade through Hukan. So it's like Alba and Z when she's taking more planets. I am a little worried that I'm spreading out too quickly. It's going to scare some folks. So I do end up getting the Kreis IFF from Ghost, as previously promised. I activate this system, and with that, I should have the six planets that I need outside of my home system to get that objective at the end of the round. As a call out, I do leave behind one extra fighter. It ends up, it's stuck behind one of the other miniatures, and I fix that at a later point, which you may or may not notice in the video. So I go ahead and move up here with the intention of potentially taking Makatol Rex next turn. This is really making me feel vulnerable because Necro has a lot of pieces on the board. I've really extended myself in terms of how many planets that I have relative to the amount of plastic. And I'm really, I would consider myself a serious threat at this point. And I really like to lay low during the beginning portion of the game here and try to fly every, under everyone's radar. So I want to build here. I kind of really like to get a Dreadnought, so I have some oomph in that system. Um, or a Carrier. Uh, and hope I pick up Trinkets next round. Yeah, let me go ahead and build a Dreadnought. That would hopefully get me a little oomph in that system, and then I'm going to pass... So at the end of the round, I end up scoring control six planets. The Hakan player spends five trade goods and Kreis gets the gatekeeper secret objective, which is to have a ship in both an A and a B wormhole. Very good secret objective for them to get. All right, so coming out is actually one that works well with what I'm going for, which is spend three tokens. Because I kind of like to get leadership so I can jump right into Megatol. All right, so he took leadership, which makes me think he might actually be running into Megatol before me. Um, I'd actually really like to pick up construction to go ahead and get another space dock out. Uh, trade goods would also be nice. Um, looking at the board, I don't really have any places I want to go except for Magnetol. Okay, so I ended up picking up trade just so I can get that second objective. In hindsight, I probably should have picked up construction because there's already one on there and as SAR, I'm probably gonna pick up enough to get that anyhow. Looks like tech just got taken by Necro. Ah, nice. Looks like Arbic just got construction, so that means I'm gonna be able to get another space dock. This is unfortunate. Um, looks like Ghost is taking back a tall, which I didn't really want. <sighs> so I'm gonna stall out a little bit here to see what the other players do. 
Um, so I ended up watching with Ghost, which is part of the reason why I was kind of delaying here. Some of his plants are looking a little juicy. So Purple is off for some trade goods to smash some destroyers into him. So the Necro is just taking back a token here. This is just a, I guess, tabletop simulator convention. You give someone a token to, as a reminder that you owe them the debt. And since he's adjacent now, he's paying that back. So I made the mistake of not having enough tokens out. So I'm paying an IFF back to get that popped. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need the yellow skip this round. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that'd be a solid four. I have all this to build with. Yeah, so I'm gonna do four tokens. I'm gonna follow up politics. I actually kind of really do hate this card because it's so random as to what card you draw. Let's see. I plus one of those two extra ships. I'm sorry. Um, and a veto may come in handy. So Arbor activates construction here, and man, do I jump at the opportunity to use it. I ended up putting a space dock in my home system just because I was a little concerned at this point of someone coming and just kind of sniping it from me. And it still gives it a little bit of room to, room to breathe. So I moved in there and I produced two infantry along with two dreadnoughts, hopefully to get a Sarball rolling there. I'm hoping there won't be too much reciprocation because um, he is end up getting away with Mechadol. <laughs> I'm also messing around with one of the special things you can grab from one of the bags to the right is like a rotating floaty factory. So if you look really close, my factory is now matching the color of my original factory and it like slowly circles around. So purple and um, purple and white are colluding right now, trading off the crew's IFF, dropping a bee wormhole. I imagine so we can come and take those planets. Um, so it puts me in a conundrum. I am going to follow that up. Pay my money for it. Uh, so I pick up Grav Drive here with the eventual goal of picking up Dreadnoughts 2. So at this point, I'm seeing that Ghost just took my most productive planet. I'm looking around at action cards going, what the heck am I going to do about this? And he immediately follows that up using fleet logistics to take another turn to play a card called Rise of the Messiah, which adds one ground force to each planet he controls. And ground forces are so hard to combat against in this game. I don't know what I can do too much about it this turn, but I think I can... Start headed towards his home system. So Arbrick is just building in her home system. So I double back here to retake some of those massive resource production planets that I have. 
Unfortunately, he has a lot of infantry here. Nice, we got one hit, I got one hit. I need to down one of these fighters. We roll again. So I'm just invading on Liptra just because he has so many units there. My other fleet will come through and help out. So Warfare was used, so I'm going to produce in the uh, iHome system space dock there. I... I think I need to produce some infantry, actually, instead of this dread. I'd really like to do both, but I just don't have the production capacity for it. Um... No, we'll do this, because I'm, I'm primarily looking to defend this space dock from that destroyer coming in. So purple plays economic initiative. That's an action to ready each cultural planet you control, which at this point in time, he just has one. I'm assuming he's mainly using it as a stall. So Ghost is just sacrificing a destroyer here for, to Necro. I think he ends up getting some trade goods out of it or something like that. I think Ghost has done the classic Ghost where he's overextended. Um, and I'm going to try to take advantage of that. But with Necro at my doorstep, I'm worried it's going to backfire. I'm really just looking to protect my core planets here. And I think with this floating factory, I might be able to do that. I am extremely low on command counters, though. So we go around real quick, and four of us pass. At this point, it's only Necro and LY still in this round. Oh, I'm really happy to see this because I'm hoping this will help get purple off my back a little bit. Ooh, looks like L1 might actually take this. Um, so good damage on both sides. I think this is effectively just going to open it up for Necro. So it looks like there was a wash in the space combat on Megatol, and his infantry didn't get to land in Megatol. So here I kind of message Purple, trying to appease him and let him take one of my um, smaller planets. Hoping to get some friendliness from him. 
get him off my back while I go deal with Ghost. And assuming he just moves back off that planet, when I take it, I'll get a trade good, so. So I pick up spend five trade goods this round. Ghost does the same. Arbrick and eventually you'll see Necro will pick up the have six planets outside of your home system. So that's not too bad of a card. Um, it is unfortunate that I need that both of these require command counters or influences effectively command counters, while at the same time I'm really lacking in those. So it looks like I got signal jamming. Not a fantastic card. It'll at least prevent one player. It could also be a stall. Um, not really sure where the opportunity lies in that yet, though. Oh, so this is a, you kind of auto win a future card that's Electra Player. So this is one of those cards where it could be super valuable because I think there's a card that even gives you just a victory point to the assigned player. Um, I'm kind of fishy fifty on whether I vote for this because we still have another agenda coming up. So Ghost ends up going all in on this and I don't really oppose him and neither did any of the other players. I assume we're all just waiting to see what the next agenda is. And I'm kind of happy about this because the more threatening I can make Ghost look, the better it'll work for me. So I don't really have a lot of skin in the game either way here. If this ends up going four, I'm sorry. I go around, I drink an extra destroyer each round to compensate. It's not a big deal. I would kind of prefer it not to go against because at this point I do have a couple of tech planets, but all of them are worth like one each. So it's not a huge deal. So I just made the non-binding deal to vote against on this. Um, I have a ton of planets to, to tap out for this anyhow. Um, and I want leadership anyhow. And I'm hoping they're going to get a lot, but I'm green and white both promise to give me leadership, which will give me kind of the first move against white. And it'll give me all of the command tokens that I really need. All right, Green ended up taking tech. Ooh, white takes trade. Um, I'm going to take leadership. All right, I'd really like to gobble up more of ghost planets, but I don't want to do it turn one because I want a friendly trade with him. Oh, I actually feel pretty bad for the god here because he has to take politics to get speaker again. So Ghost just offered me a trade good for leadership. Um, this is the first time in a long time I've actually taken leadership in a game. It's interesting. Uh, I bought, I think, four. Um, and then the three that you normally get. Um, okay, so picked up a ton of extra... Markers there. Um, I'm hoping this helps. I'm really in a weird relationship with White where we're kind of getting along, but at the same time, I'm also entirely looking at backstabbing him. And I'm hoping that as we look at the board here, purple moves off of the planet here. 
Oh, it looks like diplomacy is getting played. This is a chance to turn those tokens back into some resources. Um, so is it worth paying a command counter in order to get three money? I don't actually think it is. I could unexhaust, say, these two and try to go for eight influence, which I would need three trade goods in order to do that. Now that might be worth it. Um, I have to be a little careful about which planets I choose to do this on though. And I'm gonna follow up on politics to get two. It would put me over by one, which is unfortunate. I think of these, the least important one is probably the bunker. Because blue doesn't have a PDS back on his home system. So I'm going to ditch that. So it goes to activate their home system build. Also, if you don't mind, don't forget to like, subscribe, and especially leave a comment. Let me know if there's things that I can, especially in these long videos, show differently or convey differently or something you feel like you're missing. Oh, I, so I really feel actually really bad for Ghost at this point because uh, everyone's kind of picking on him. Decker coming in with a Disable uh, to get rid of that PDS fire as he lands. And two ground forces versus two ground forces with a Bombardment. Oh, so that worked out pretty much perfectly because um, Ghost is retaining control of Megatol now, so he can't Imperial, which means I don't have to go after Purple. So, so that was just a stall. Um, I don't have anywhere to go. I could have sh shut down some production and some of the other players, but I really don't want any kind of that metagame aggression towards me. And I don't want to overtly come after Ghost right now. Ugh. So the Arbic's growing a lot. I still like my focus of trying to be friends with Purple. I don't see a ton of aggression from L1 and then trying to gobble up Ghost Slice. Hakan just moving some plastic around. Awesome. So white here pops trade, and we end up doing a. Uh, he replenishes me, and he kind of skims one off the top trade here that I've been waiting for. I usually really like to go green, kind of no matter what race I go with, but Sar doesn't really, it's not really working out for me within this game. And at this point, I don't really know if it would be worth it, even though I'm gonna get the tech skip here, which would be nice. Um, I think picking up these dreads would be more efficient. Um, 
and it also prevents them from getting hit from the direct hit action card, which is probably the more important ability. Well, I guess debatably. Um, and it would let me zoom around. And I'm hoping at the end of this round, I can have Ghost down to his home system and then push into that. Yeah, so my current thought is to move in and take these systems while I can and then see if purple holds up his promise of kind of back in a way. So I intentionally don't leave anything behind here because I don't want an easy target for Necro to come in and get some tech off of. I go ahead and skip this battle here just because I don't think I lost anything. Um, I may have lost an, an infantry or something. And then I go ahead and use Sarween to reinforce some additional infantry as I move towards this home system. <laughs> so Ghost is trying to sell his cruise IFF to Hakan just to get the A off the system that I just took because I can jump over who to Hakan at this point. Hakan just playing more effort to build up some forces over there. Actually putting down a lot of plastic. I did just realize I could flank speed into Megatol and probably take it. I don't really think it's worth it. Yeah, so he's just doing plague on Lerda 4. Looks like one got killed. Not a big deal. So I'll be honest, I did not see this coming from them. Um, I can't really blame them, it's free real estate. Uh, I really need these tokens so bad. Let's see what I get. Control four industrial planets. I'm uh, pretty close to having that. That's not too bad. Let's look at the board. I have one over there that I can pick up, so. So I just took a Tarman over here, hoping that I can fulfill that secret objective. Although I may consider delaying just so I don't look as much like as much of a threat. It is looking like I'm going to have to deal with purple in terms of leadership scoring. But I'm hoping with our current map position, red and yellow will push into purple and keep him in check. Up oh, and... Ghost and L1 just do a support swap.
So I'm moving all that plastic in just so I get the free build and I can get two ground forces. So while I'm doing this, L1 activates their home system and does a build. So I end up doing a support swap with purple here, just because I really want to focus on ghost and getting them out of the picture. And with green putting a little pressure on me too, this just ensures that the necrovirus isn't going to come after me. So I built a bunch of ground forces here um, after moving and I've pretty much passed. I'm hoping to conserve some of my tokens for the upcoming ground. Looks like green here is playing frontline deployment that lets him place three infantry from his reinforcements on a planet he controls. So I'm gonna pay five here and then three trade goods in order to spend eight influence. I'll also score the four industrial planets. Going back to my board here. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's a good draw. And I don't have to discard down. I mean, I'm sorry, so I have a decent number of trade goods anyhow, but sitting at four right now. And looking at the board, no, there's really not any out there for me to pick up, but pretty decent. I do want to get a third star ball while rolling, and I am concerned about this. So taking a look at the scoreboard here, L1Z1 grabs control six planets outside your home system. Necro picks up two new ones. He gets the spin three strategy tokens and eight influence. Oh, two unit upgrades. Um, let's go over here and look at which ones I can even qualify for. Carrier would be great to get the extra move. Yeah. I would go for Floating Factory, but I really don't want to give that over to the Necrovirus. So I think Carrier is the one. So Minister of Peace comes out and Ghost goes ahead and snags that using the previous law he got, Committee Formation, which kind of auto gives it to him. Ooh, so I'm not, if this goes for most of my infantry are in the air, I believe. There's a couple on ground, which would give me a couple of trade goods, so not a big deal. Um, but if it goes against, this would get me one on each location, which would be fantastic, I think. So L1 plays sanction on against. If you vote against, you end up having to lose something from your fleet supply. Ugh, brutal. So Arbrick plays a Warfare Rider on four. She would end up getting a Dreadnought if this passed. Oh, so white plays nine against, and I kind of prefer that. So I kind of give this a thunk, and I switched to one a four because that would get rid of infantry off every single planet, basically, or a lot of them at least. And as SAR, I have a lot of them in space. So it'll help me kind of move in. I still have the infantry in space to take the planet. And then unlike the other players, I can move as I go to replenish my infantry. So here I kind of convince Red to vote for with me by offering my trade agreement. All right, so that helped me out a lot on the ground. I probably shouldn't have paid the trade agreement for it because I, I didn't care about it that much. So I'm kind of thinking I'd like to pick up a second space dock. Trade would be good. I would take Imperial to score two, but I think it's a little early for that. I think I'm gonna get politics just so I can choose Imperial first next round. Purple picked up Imperial, which I'm hoping will draw aggro from some of the other players and get 
some plastic off the board. Um, and then next turn, I'll take it. I'm debating on whether I want to knock out the white player or to fulfill the secret objective. All right, so he's playing leadership, which is fantastic. Uh, we don't have diplomacy this round, though, so I do have to keep that in mind. I am hoping I can keep enough back in order to get a um, the objective, because the two-unit upgrade is kind of one I can keep in my pocket, and no one can really prevent me from taking it. The other one I can be stopped with. Um, so I have some resources here, I have a couple resources here, but nothing big. So this would get me a dreadnought, this would get me a dreadnought. I think I'm going to keep the rest of these planets up and go with four here and just hope that's enough. I decided to go and, pay and pick up one more, um, just because I wanted to make sure I had enough for the end of round. So I made a mistake in reading Minister of Peace. I thought he could only play this on another player's turn, which is unfortunate. Like, I thought he could only play it if two other players were fighting. So trade was being played. I got rid of my trade agreement like a dummy, so they're working out something. Uh, it looks like I ended up getting my trade agreement back. So L1 plays Mining Initiative, which is a fantastic card for L1 because they get trade goods equal to one planet they control and their home planet is worth five. So Ghost is pretty much spending all his money in order to get tech, which confuses me. I think it's too late to go and get any green tech. Um... Plasma scoring may be worth it. Um, I think carrier would be the most immediately useful though. So I'm really uh, regretting that mistake I made where I probably should have gotten rid of that law first. I, th I do want to take this planet back here to get the three resources each turn. And then I think push into... Maybe either L1 a little bit, maybe. I'm really worried that both L1 and Ghost are going to push back hard on me. When a combat against the player has the most victory points, I'm really tempted to just backstab purple. Because right now he's in the lead, and I could probably pull back in this direction. Swing like a pendulum. I want to see if I can stall out long enough to make one of the other players push against him, though. So my heart drops when I see Reactor Meltdown. Destroy one space dock against a SAR player is the worst thing you can do because we are so dependent upon them. 
I think he does it against purple because purple has Megatol, which kind of grabs that meta aggro. And this is one of the reasons why I personally really dislike trying to take or hold Megatol Rex. And it's also why I place such high value on um, those action phase cards, because those are the cards you can get a point from that just kind of surprises everyone. Usually at the end of the game, you kind of have this meta talk of who's going to win, how's going to win, who do we stop them, and kind of a little kingmakery. But with those action phase cards, you can sneak a point in. Uh, so I play Industrial Initiative to get four uh, trade goods. I'm looking at trying to flank speed into L1's home would get me cut supply lines. Um, I'm pretty sure that would get saboted though. At this point we have, uh, at this point we have 45 cards left, 26 in the discard and not a single sabo has been played. I'm tempted to risk the flank speed. I'm going to draw two cards anyhow from politics. And it might be worth the risk. Ooh, I don't know what's happening there. It looks like purple is attacking. Oh, nice. Yes, please. So skilled retreat on out. It looks like you left the, the ground force behind. Um, Ah, brilliant. So red's moving into Megatol with something. This is exactly what I'm looking for, is something to push purple down. So there's a lot of plastic loss on both sides here, but way more from red. And red's looking really, really vulnerable right now. What happened is Red underestimated the Alistair, which is the Neko's flagship, and probably one of the best flagships in the game. Let me know in the comments if you think there's one better and why. Um, but that lets you choose as many of the ground forces you want in that system to act as fighters, um, which is absolutely fantastic. So blue just kind of asked me to leave. And you know what? That's a good idea. I can move over here and come up from behind and red. So we have a quick little skirmish here. I end up losing my fighter screen. Spoiler alert, that's important. So I'm hoping that moving into there will let me move and get 
cut the supply lines. So I think this game may kind of hit me how much the second day for Warfare doesn't help Sar at all. I never really thought about it too much. So I told Red here that I just really need adjacency, uh, which is technically true. Uh, I really just need to get the above the space dock there. I might wait for green to pass and see if I can get this carrier moved all the way to his home system. So red plays forward supply base, which gives him three trade goods and one other person gets one trade good. So I'm going to take this system back. It's really overdue. I'm gobbling up all my plastic so Necro can't come in and get some free tech and hopefully it makes them go away. With the exception of the ground forces in my home system, just because there's a lot of objectives associated with taking a player's home system, and since Sar cares so little about it, it's really easy to get that objective from Sar. rolling environment for my one dread there see how it goes all right that's one hit so go ahead and roll my nine dice here and score exactly one hit man infantry combat is so wishy-washy in this because they only land a hit on such a high number it's difficult i re-roll again i roll one extra dice it doesn't matter he has three infantry left on the planet so that kind of wins it um I also end up building four fighters here just to get a fighter screen going on that fleet. Oh, yeah. So there was some consideration to go after my fleet up there. And I'm really hoping they all go for Mechatol. Just push purple down. Green and purple are at it in Mechatol right now. This is so wonderful. Red just attacked... So red attacked purple and Megatol. Green's following it up now to, uh, I'm too excited. Green followed it up to try to take it. And he tried to skill retreat, which I think I missed that on film, but I'll put a copy of the card, which would immediately let purple retreat, but red sabotaged it. So not only do I get to see purple's plastic get removed off the board, this means there's one sabotage off the table and I can flank speed into Green's home system, assuming someone else doesn't play Savo. Now what I'm hoping is that Ghost can somehow get a secret objective or something to catch up or purple can get knocked down, something like that. I, I could activate purple system. I don't know. Something that's deeply upsetting me though is the number of tokens I have over here. It's a continuous theme. So this carrier initially has two moves because I've upgraded them. Add in one for the flank speed and another for grav drive, and I can make it to his home system. I do make the mistake of not looking at his sheet and realizing that he has plasma scoring, which gives him an extra roll. 
making this a pretty foolish decision because he gets two PDS hits and that's a very good chance of just taking me out and he ends up scoring, turn their fleets to dust. It kind of works out pretty well. Um, clear out. I think I have this shield's holding. Should help me out. Does he? I'm sure he has upgraded dreadnoughts. Oh, so we get three hits there. Looks like he's sustaining on two, killing a fighter. Um, still waiting for his roll. Three hits. I'm gonna shields holding. And then sustain all one dreadnought. Oh, only one hit and three from him. Um, uh, Ooh. That's super painful for me. Really concerned about that. All right, what do we have here? Each player destroys all but two of their dreadnoughts and all but four of their cruisers. Each player exhausts each of their plants that have a tech specialty. I don't like either of those. I also don't like the select player draws one secret objective. Um, I will be getting to vote last, so... I think I'm going to put both on top and then make sure we do this one first and hopefully... They'll let me get it, just because they'll be afraid of what's next. Let's see, Infiltrate, it's a good card. Parlay would stave off an invasion for a round. None of those really help me with objectives though. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass. This is at least a good for a stall. Situational. Um, it didn't seem to give me the two tokens though. Ah, yeah, there we go. Ooh, okay, control one planet and another player's home system. Uh, maybe? I don't think I have, I don't think I have a big enough fleet to pull that off. Man, losing the fleet over there, I really should have had a bigger fighter screen with that. That is 100% my fault. Taking a quick look at the scoring this round, looks like L1Z1 scored five traded goods. Arbrick spent eight influence. Necro and Ghost both got the two unit upgrades. And I personally picked up the spin three strategy tokens. Um, so Neko's in the lead right now, followed closely by Ghost and myself, which is really surprising considering how few planets Ghost has. That's really impressive. He's a really good player. <laughs> so they're 
using their votes. Uh, if anything, I can set what the next card is. I think getting rid of the fleets, and I will be able to rebuild faster than them. So I sold this for three trade goods, knowing what the next uh, objective is. We'll see how it goes. Because I'd really like to wipe the board of a lot of plastic. So an Imperial Rider gets played on against, which pretty much says don't vote this way. Oh. So Assassinate Representative gets played on me, so I can't vote on this agenda. Which is okay, because it ends up going four anyhow. So we get that plastic off the board. I think I made the star mistake of snowballing too soon. Ugh, I'm really torn on this. I really need another space stock where I have potential to get knocked completely out of the game. I didn't want to do that. Not at all. So at this point, I really don't like this play because purple picks politics, he gets speaker, next turn he gets imperial. I think at this point, this would pretty much guarantee him the game. <sighs> yeah, it made such a classic scar mistake. Expanded too fast. Didn't get enough plastic behind me. So it looks like a flink speed from white. Uh, hmm. Ah, so I parlayed him from taking the home system. So I kind of like it being there because he kind of guards my home system. So I have to be careful if I follow this or not because I only have two tokens. Yeah, okay. There's just... In Imperial, I think that I would follow otherwise. So I put this here. I don't think I don't think I will Yeah. See if I can move and create a decent fleet near his home system. And I'm hoping this floating factory is out of range. So Hakan plays trade.
So Arbrick moving in on purple. Really loving this. Uh, definitely need some help keeping purple from winning here. She ends up taking only one of the planets and just annihilates them through bombardment. So I think I can manage to score this, which would get me up to two points this round. Yeah, the only way I can think to finish this is to somehow get someone's home system. So Ghost activates his home world and builds there. I'm not sure why Purple's doing this, because even if he takes Megatol, someone's going to take us from base. Oof, I don't think there's a chance that he wins this because all hits need to be assigned to non-fighter ships. Well, all Dreadnought hits. Yeah, this is going to leave him. Even if he wins this, it's going to leave him with one ground force to land. He's not going to win this. Just lucky shot to stall, really. Something that I don't really capture here very well is the Hakan player plays an action card. I think it's focused research.
So Arbrick plays Fighter Conscription, the which gives her one fighter on each uh, kind of system that can have capacity for it. So L1 activates their home system in order to build, and the ghost player goes ahead and passes. So Necro activates my home system, I assume to get the objective to control another player's home system. And the ghost player plays Counterstroke. Oh, new wormhole. Come on, move that dreadnought. Move that dreadnought. Move that dreadnought. Move the dreadnought. Move the dreadnought. No, 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 move it, move it, move it, move the dreadnought, move the dreadnought, move the dreadnought, move the dreadnought, oh, no. All right, so think of this through. I could move some units in to get adjacent. And then I could move to land. So I play insubordination primarily to stall out and pray that an opportunity presents itself to take a player's home system I look around the board, I'm not really seeing anyone great to play this against. I end up playing it on L1, Z1. So Hakan activates that system in order to build. We'll see a couple things of plastic hit the board, but he goes ahead and pass just to move the game along. So Arbic plays Spy against the Necrovirus. Hopefully she got something good. I'm actually looking around, I don't see a lot of people pass, but I only see one person with an action card who has passed, so I think now it's time to move. So in doing this, I end up losing support for the throne. 
but at the same time I get threatened enemies, which is an adjacent to an enemy home system objective and spark the rebellion, which is one point for winning against the person with the highest score. So I lose one point to get two. In hindsight, I probably should have kept that spark of rebellion up my sleeve and not revealed it because those action phase cards are really what win you this game. I also end up building two dreadnoughts and two fighters and during the combat I lose one fighter but not a big deal. So it's a super long shot that I win this, but I thought I'd at least try. Well, that was suicide. So she actually does pretty well in this fight. At one point, getting um, purple down to two ground forces. Unfortunately, with Deoxium animators, he gets one unit back. And I believe he uses uh, infantry two or copies for tech in order to resurrect a bunch of the dead units too. So going into the last round, it looks like contenders for this are myself, Necro, and L1. L1 still has space for one more secret. So if he can get one of those stage two objectives and a secret or other, another point somewhere, he's got it. Um, if I can get a stage two, I've got it. And same thing with Necro, if he can pull out one of the stage two objectives, he's got it. So it's really going to come down to initiative order or whomever can pop Imperial.
Worst position to be in. All the level one objectives done. All my secrets done. Nothing I can pull out except grabbing one of these objectives. Next objective is spend 16 influence. <laughs> so I have no idea how to pronounce this. Ixthian artifact? Basically, it has a chance of either everyone gets free research or a bunch of stuff around Mechatol starts blowing up just based on the die roll. It's a pretty interesting card, actually. So, good luck bestowed upon us. Um, I end up going ahead and grabbing floating factories. At this point, this is going to be the last round of the game, so if Necro really wants to steal it, go ahead. So last thing we get is you get to draw an extra action card at the end of the status phase, but again, this is the last round of the game, so we just kind of toss it to yellow. I am kind of sitting over here scratching my head as to why no one public disgraced Imperial or played the action card that lets you keep the um, strategy card that you had before. Um, did confuse me. So Purple ends up playing Impersonation, which allows him to spend three influence to draw one secret objective. It's always important to organize your trade goods. So at this point, we realize that L1, Z1 is going to win by playing Imperial, getting a point from Mechatol, 
and then you're getting two points from spending 16 influence. So by me, me taking this planet, it takes one influence away from him and prevents him from getting that objective. I kind of hate this kingmakery part of the game, but if I prevent him from winning, maybe purple can't win, and then that would go to me for third since I have politics. So right here, I actually do another thing that I haven't done in a long time in GI4 game. The verse in this was grabbing leadership. And now I'm actually spending a command token in order to get uh, replenished and trade. That way I don't have to do the one off the top in order to wash with someone. Um, reason being is because that will put me at 16 that I can get kind of regardless of how many planets I lose. Yeah, so right now, pretty much the table has figured out that if green can pop Imperial, he will score Manipulate Galactic Law as soon as he gets a couple bucks. And then get the Imperial. Then purple will win unless he loses his home world. So I'm pretty sure purple here is playing flank speed in order to get to mecha 12 Rex. Um, as you're about to see, I had to step away for a second. So I'm not 100% sure, but... So I don't really go over too much of the fight in Mechatol 
because green retains control of it through the ground forces there. Ground combat in this game, so difficult. Having to roll 8 or above to hit, it's so sweet. <laughs> well, there's public disgrace. So she just moved her destroyer into a system. I assume she has the secret objective to have one or more ships and six systems. What are we just trying to do with that? He's a little short of getting that objective. He just needs a little more money. Oh, I guess you could take the home system. Maybe that's what he's going for. So purple builds in his home system. You'll eventually see him drop some infantry there to reinforce it. I go ahead and pass because I realize I can't really do anything to stop either purple or green from winning at this point. So white steps in and rolls for red because the game's been going on for a little while. So he has to step out at this point and it's pretty much over. Um, so no worries. So purple does ask if he can get the ghost IFF to go over there and stop green from winning by taking his home system or taking back red's planet, something like that. But ghost decides not to do that, which is fair. So our just moving a ship into another system, I assume for that secret objective. Oh, there you go. Imperial gets popped. He scores one point for Mechatol Rex and then two points for controlling another player's home system. Here's a final look at the you know end of game scoring, what it looks like at the end. I got third place. Here's another look at the secret objectives. I know I missed a couple call-outs 
got recording. So thank everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please leave me some feedback to you what I can do better. Uh, I'm actually really excited because I got my third subscriber while I was working on this. Um, unfortunately, it's now also like really eight in the morning, so I should probably go to sleep now. So good night, guys. More good morning.